Hey there YouTube, welcome back to another uh, Black Powder update. Um, I basically uh, had a decision, um, I, I basically got to the point where I was uh, ready to base up my um, my next battery of artillery and I realised that my initial plan of mounting the officer uh, wasn't going to work because they're, you know, they're basically, even though it's quite a big stand, it's still not quite got the room. Uh, for a mounted officer, uh, especially with the sort of um, the sort of like train ideas uh, that, that I always try to put into my bases. Um, so obviously, because my last one had like a tray on it and stuff, and, and sort of like a berm and stuff like that, I tried to keep the the train like similar to it, not not an exact copy, but similar. So uh, I kind of ran out of room to to sort of uh, comfortably put a mounted rider there. So what I did in the end was I actually ordered a uh, a foot officer uh, from front rank and I think the guy was on holiday until after New Year so I'm probably gonna have like an extra week week or so's delay uh, before I actually get that figure in hand uh, so what I decided to do was I decided to mount the original mounted officer on a little separate stand uh, you know like a 25 by 50 um, and have him like standing beside the battery um, but like I say, I still plan on adding uh, a, a second foot officer, and I've kind of left a flat uh, area of uh, of the base uh, to accommodate uh, that particular figure when he comes. Um, so uh, I'm going to take down to the bench, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, what I've done. Um, now I wasn't rushing these guys; I wasn't even half uh, doing half the amount of painting that I'm not that I've normally been doing over the, over the last sort of week or so. Um, although I suppose you could say for the last maybe two or three days of it, uh, I, I certainly kind of put quite a few hours in, uh, you know, sort of like maybe instead of one or two hours a day, um, just after Christmas to sort of like three or four hours uh, for a couple of days just to actually get them to the point where I was more or less uh, ready to uh, complete them. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I say, let's get into the bench, I'll show you them, uh, and uh, uh, you can see uh, what all the fuss is about. So I'll catch you. In a second, and of course, uh, it'll also be a cat update because uh, Bo is actually sat uh, directly behind the uh, where I'm going to be filming. So, uh, catch you in a second. Okay, YouTube, uh, welcome back to the bench. And uh, as you can see, Bobo is uh, sat up enjoying the heat of the radiator because the radiator is actually just behind uh, my painting table there. Um, she's actually been uh, ill uh, over Christmas, she's uh, had a cat cold. Uh, so she has been uh, sniffling and sneezing and off her food and uh, she had me quite worried. Uh, so I had, basically after Christmas, I think it was the 27th, I had to take her to the vets. Well, I didn't take her to the vets, but I, rang, I spoke to the vets on the phone and uh, he prescribed or she prescribed uh, her some antibiotics and uh, she's now literally got uh, less than... Well, well, sort of, I suppose you could say a, a day's worth to go, uh, and she's already uh, a lot better than she was, so uh, not particularly a uh, good end of the year uh, for her. Uh, in fact, one time uh, she was having a sneezing fit and she was sat underneath my painting table and she actually sneezed so hard that she actually whacked her head against one of the T-bars of the desk and actually gave herself a nosebleed. Uh, so I had to not only deal with trying to calm her down, but also uh, her... Uh, throwing droplets of blood everywhere uh, which was uh, quite messy uh, anyway down to uh, the business so here we have uh, the um, the second battery or the final battery of my uh, divisional artillery for the first infantry division uh, and this of course is the King uh, King's German Legion uh, horse artillery uh, battery and um, we basically have um, my normal setup of two batteries. Um, I, again, I mixed the two crews up because I had a foundry crew and a Perry's crew. So I basically gave uh, them an extra figure, which um, I actually I actually converted these guys into NCOs by uh, giving them plastic putty. Uh, um, the scarlet belts around their waists to make them into NCOs um, and uh, like I say I have actually ordered a, a foot officer um, who 
uh, will probably go. I think I've got I've left him space over here um, for him to actually go onto the base uh, uh, to give them a, you know to make them a standard base. But I've also uh, competed this uh, horse artillery uh, commander uh, who I've actually modelled to be the uh, commanding officer of, of the actual King's German Legion uh, battery. Um, and I'll show you him uh, as well in a second. So uh, let's first of all start off with uh, this battery here. Um, and I'll give you the blurb if this is the correct stand that's actually got the uh, sticker on. Yeah, it is. Uh, so these guys are, will be the uh, the second uh, horse artillery, King's German Legion, uh, B Company, Divisional Artillery, 1st British Infantry Division, and they're led by a Major Coolman. Uh, so let's go in and uh, show you this uh, first battery, and, and you can see that I've kind of styled the terrain along the same sort of um, the same sort of idea as as my second battery, uh, but done in a slightly different way. So it's kind of instead of being like a full-on berm, it's just like a uh, a, a dip in the land. Uh, again, we've got some uh, of my favourite slate rocks thrown in there. I think. Uh, it's always great for uh, for building up uh, helix and stuff. Um, I've left a lot more uh, sort of muddy area around, so it looks like it's uh, sort of disturbed ground. And uh, a usual plethora of uh, shrubberies and bushes to make it look a little bit wild. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, the crew. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever done uh, horse artillery, uh, guys, uh, and they're quite. Uh, quite intricate uniforms, um, but I think they came out uh, really well in the end. Um, you can see the uh, the helmets with the um, the white plumes, all the uh, the yellow lacing on their uh, their uniforms, and also the intricate lacing on the backs of the uniforms too. Um, the, I've got to say, these guys took me a fair amount of time to uh, to paint up, um, but I'm really happy with the uh, the way they've come out. They've also all got these red stripes on their legs as well, um, which were uh, a little bit annoying to do as well. And you can see that the, there's actually a slight difference in uniform. Uh, the ones uh, from Perry's have got the um, the later style breeches um, for the obviously for the the, sort of the wet weather. And the um, the foundry guys are, have got their more sort of normal uniform uh, with just the straight up uh, striped trousers or the striped uh, pantaloons. Uh, high waisted, of course. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's the uh, a view of the uh, the belt that I made for the NCO out of plastic putty. I think it came out pretty cool. It does the job. It may not be like a masterful. Uh, bit of sculpting there but uh, it does the job uh, make, you know it makes him stand out and uh, he's got his sergeant stripes uh, on both arms as, as these guys did uh, try and get that to focus there we go and um, yeah pretty happy really this, I believe this is a foundry gun as well um, well, I could be wrong actually that could that could be the Perry's gun uh, forgotten uh, I, I, let me just double check on them. Uh, I know that it's, the difference is that the Perry's gun, or it, one of them. Let me just find out for sure. So yeah, so so this is the uh, this is the Perry's style gun, uh, where this uh, long bit at the end plugs into uh, the turn the turn bracket, which is actually mounted on the cannon, um, which I think this this one has. So uh, this is the Perry's gun. Uh, so that means that four of the crew are Perry's and this one here is the uh, foundry. Uh, and if you remember back, uh, that particular guy was actually the double positioned guy with a match. Uh, which for some bizarre reason you seem to get in the pack. So you basically end up getting two of the same figures. But I cut the match out of his hand and, and made a quite a, a cool sort of uh, NCO figure out of him. So I'm pretty chuffed at that. So that's the first part of the battery. Um uh, show the second part of the battery next as well. Uh, obviously, um, that, the stand I just showed you will have the officer added at some point. Uh, now, again, to continue the theme, 
uh, I, I managed to uh, locate my uh, bag of trees uh, so I decided to put like a, uh, a more of a normal style tree onto the base uh, and this time uh, there's no sort of major hillock but there is a little bit of raised land at the front of the base um, and these guys are actually uh, in the process of loading uh, so you can see that this guy here is about to put the shell in he's ready to, to ram it home and this guy is of course uh, covering the touch hole so that no air uh, can get in to uh, ignite the powder from a spark or whatever or a little bit of ember uh, and again I'll put the uh, the sort of up a little bit of ground to put the tree in to make it more secure and also to just to make it uh, look a little bit more um, natural uh, you know just so, so it's not like a tree just sticking out of something that's totally uh, flat um, again put lots of sort of shrubberies around it to show that it's kind of wild uh, and I actually used the, uh, the little powder keg um, and pile of cannonballs uh, that you get in the foundry set uh, just to put at the back there to, to make it a little bit more interest. Again, we have a, uh, a figure that was converted into a sergeant by adding a uh, the red sash. Uh, and other than that, uh, just standard sort of cannon crew really. Um, but again, uh, you know, uh, once uh, once you sort of lock down uh, the uniform, um, they became a lot, a lot easier to uh, paint. Um, but they certainly had a very scrappy stage uh, until uh, the yellow goes on um, and the, the yellow and the red uh, they actually look really quite scrappy um, and of course the, the, the Tarleton helmets or something like that um, they've actually got like um, a sort of metallic a metallic part to them um, instead of like you, you'd think they'd just be all black, but they're not. Uh, and they also have like a a coloured uh, piece of sash cloth around as well, um, which uh, is more prominent on the KGL because they actually have uh, a blue uh, piece uh, around the tops of their helmets with sort of yellow stripes. Uh, but yeah, um, in fact, actually these are KGL, aren't they? So you should be able to see that if I. There you go, you can see, just about see uh, one of the yellow stripes there. Um, so that is uh, the second battery. Again, um, pretty chuffed with how they turned out. And then finally, uh, I was very happy with how the uh, commander came out. So this guy is, of course, um, Major Coolman. Um, he is actually from the Perry's Artillery Officers Pack, and he's supposed to be Mercer. Uh, but I decided to turn them into uh, Major Coolman. So we have a uh, chestnut horse. That came out very nice. Um, we have the very intricate uniform, um, practically a Hussar's uniform, um, of the uh, officer himself. You can see that basically all the uh, it's all gold, gold lacing. Um, all over it, perhaps you all over his chest, all over his arms, all over the palace, and then it's got grey, uh, grey fur bits on uh, the palace. It's also got gold, uh, gold around his uh, saber tash. And uh, yeah, very intricate figure. Uh, it took a fair amount of time to, to paint up actually. Um, and of course the horse, a uh, nice chestnut horse, a nice sort of honey chestnut, um, and uh, some uh, white socks, and I think uh, a fitting horse for this guy, uh, just a little bit more posh than a your average sort of chestnut, um, but yeah, uh, very happy with how he turned out, and like I say, uh, he'll, I'm basically going to use him as part of the battery, um, because uh, I've actually already got a figure to be the, the actual brigade commander, um, and that's basically going to be made up of uh, the one of my other uh, artillery command figures. Uh, so there you go. That is the um, the second battery of the divisional artillery of the first uh, British Infantry Division. 
Uh, what am I working on at the moment? Um, I'm actually working on the uh, the other two. Um, they're at a really early stage at the moment. I mean, here's their horses. Um, the other two artillery officers that I have out of the same pack. Uh, one of which uh, is destined to be the um, the actual brigade commander, um, and the other one uh, I've just painted up um, just to, to be a little bit more. Uh, you know, if you paint one figure, you may as well paint two. Uh, so I'm just doing the other one, uh, whose job is to be uh, properly defined. But um, it'll be cool to uh, have these guys finished because then I can basically use them for something. Um, obviously, one will be a divisional commander for these guys, um, and I'm not 100% sure what I'll do with the other one yet. But uh, he'll be painted up anyway, uh, so I'll be able to find a use for him in the future. But as you can see, they're, they're literally uh, in their very, very early stages. Uh, I, mean, I mean, these guys literally had their, the black, and the blue, and the grey uh, added. And now uh, this guy here is, is quite cool because he's kind of wearing his long coat. Um, so you can see he's wearing his long coat over his uh, uniform. He's got his telescope underneath his arm. It's quite cool. Um, I was kind of thinking about, I was actually originally going to use this guy as the uh, divisional commander, but I may well end up using this guy, just because I, I quite like him. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically what I'm working on at the moment. Um, and that is uh, the end of this video. Uh, as we can see, Bobo is uh, still enjoying the heat of the radiator. And uh, she'll be there for... Uh, most of the day I'd imagine um, but yeah so uh, I'm hoping everyone uh, had a, a, a good New Year's um, uh, mine was uh, pretty quiet it's normally just me and me and Bo uh, and then uh, this year was, was no different uh, so uh, you know Corona or not uh, my New Year's was basically more or less the same I'm not, I've never been a, a big New Year's person to tell the truth um, and uh yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been uh, who subscribed and following my channel. Um, there's plenty more to come, uh, and uh, um, you know, fingers crossed, uh, there may even be uh, some different things other than Napoleonics, uh, because uh, you know, I mean, um, I'm still uh, heavily hooked on Napoleonics, uh, and I've still got big plans uh, for Napoleonics throughout the year. Uh, but there's also um, some new elements creeping in. There's um, some blood ball, some dead man's hand. Uh, the very strong possibility of my uh, six millimeter English Civil War project going ahead at some point. Um, and of course, uh, some perhaps some buildings along with the west the western theme of dead man's hand. Uh, blood ball, of course. Uh, although I probably won't feature that heavily because I know. There's not many people that are that interested in it, uh, but I'll still kind of show off uh, some of the uh, the highlights. Uh, and of course, um, uh, sometime towards the summer, um, I am due a, a Kickstarter uh, from uh, the second um, part of Core Space, the the, the uh, second instalment uh, of of the uh, the game. Uh, the, I think I think it's called Firstborn. Um, I uh, as soon as that was released, uh, my interest was piqued, and uh, when they started their Kickstarter, uh, not only am I, you know, I was incredibly happy with the first, so it wasn't surprising that I was going to jump on the second. And um, although initially I, I was just kind of going on the sort of the basic, the basic set, which is basically just a board game, uh, but I ended up going for the the sort of the super deal again. Um, I think it's like I think it's maybe ten or twenty pounds more expensive than um, than the original one, um, but you get an absolute bucket of stuff. You, you basically kind of almost get double your amount of money's uh, worth of, of, of stuff um, for the, the the price that you pay. So I'm basically getting everything you can possibly get uh, for that particular uh, release, uh, and I'm quite looking forward to it because I do love course base. Um, and of course, uh, like I say, the Napoleonics will be continuing. Um, I've got obviously the, the field ambulance and the verse wagon uh, that will be done at some point. Um, I've got big plans for my uh, for my revisit to uh, Third Corps 
um, uh, you know that that's going to be quite a big project uh, building up those uh, those second battalions. Um, I mean, another thirteen battalions of, of French line uh, is going to be a little bit of a of a hard job. Uh, and then, of course, a um, British uh, infantry division of some sort, which is uh, yet to be confirmed, or maybe even you know maybe uh, Brunswickers or maybe even Dutch. Who knows? Uh, but I will be doing uh, something to counteract. Uh, the French reinforcements, uh, along with in some kind of uh, British division, divisional form. Uh, so yeah, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye from me, and goodbye from a dozy Bobo, who's uh, very nice and warm over here, uh, looking cute as always. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you all uh, in the next one. Bye bye.